G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Here we are in After Effects, your happy place. And today I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on sky replacements. If you're shooting a scene outside, generally the sky is not always gonna be in your favor. So there will be situations where you'll need to replace that sky. One of my first VFX jobs was on a film called Wrath from 2011. And all I can remember doing for that movie probably about 75 or 80% of the, the shots was uh, sky replacement. So you might run into a situation like this where if I just take remove this sky here, this is a great shot of um, my friend Phil and Nick hiking up a mountain in New Zealand with some other randos tagging along. And as you can see, you know, you can just imagine the sky would look beautiful, but this angle or this shot, the sky just wasn't cooperating with the camera, with the exposure and with the time of day. What we can go and do is make the background a little bit more exciting, make the sky, you know, look a little bit cooler and give it that kick that makes it look like a really um, epic day out on the mountain. So if you're doing a sky replacement, you're generally just trying to make your shot look better or to maybe add a mood to your shot. Imagine if the story required like a stormy scene or like a really foreboding moment. Um, then maybe we should have added an overcast and darky cloudy sky over this scene. But if it's a happy hiking moment, then nice bright blue sky on a super sunny day, it works for the shot and looks far better than just this plain shot here. So what are we actually gonna to do today? Step one is to track our shot in uh, Boris FX Mocha. As you can see, it's a pretty slow moving handheld shot here on a telephoto zoom. So it should be a pretty simple track in Mocha. Then we're gonna do a little bit of an alpha mat to use to separate our sky from the ground there. And then just fine tune that result with the original shot and a little bit of masking magic, add in your sky and boom, there you have it. You can then go in and do whatever you like. Got some mountains in there, why not? Add whatever you want, an airplane, another sphere coming in to destroy this beautiful, beautiful mountainscape. But really once you've tracked that shot, credit that alpha mat or maybe rotoscoped it if you need to, uh, the world's your oyster. You can add whatever you want in that background. And with a little bit of tweaking, it'll look magic. So guys, I've linked the project file in the description below. You can have the shot that I filmed. I also paste some links to some of these sky shots. I can't give those to you guys just due to copyright issues, but they're easy to download and are free to use. Okay, first step here, I'm gonna drag my shot into a new composition. And there we have it, so it's a 1920 by 1080 shot and it's 50 frames per second. Just looking at the movement here, again, like I said, pretty simple handheld movement, no crazy moves, but we'll make sure that we lock that down nicely in Mocha for After Effects. With your shot selected animation, come down to track in Boris Effects Mocha, and then with your shot selected, click on effect controls and hit the Mocha button, that'll open up this tracking software. If you uh, tagged along in my six episode VFX compositing series, I touched heaps on uh, motion tracking in Mocha. If you wanna learn more, then take a look back at those episodes. They are linked in the description below. You can watch the whole series or just go episode by episode. Anyway, here we are in the interface, click this little drop down and make sure you're on essentials mode. Then what you wanna do is hit your X spline layer here. And we wanna get a good track here let's just select basically the whole mountainside like so and we can just come up like that just trying to select like a nice chunk of it our mocha is a planar tracker so like a point tracker point tracker you know detects the points of contrast whereas a planar tracker detects planes or areas of contrast so it'll use all the information within that shape that you selected to determine the uh, movement of the tracker so come over here to translation scale rotation and skew now this shot here it does not rotate it does not uh, zoom in or out it does move up and down and left to right. So it's a pretty simple camera move. So all we're gonna to need today is just translation. I'm gonna rename this BG track and we can go ahead and hit track forward. So depending where you're on your shot, just keep an eye on that. Obviously that's come down there. So we're gonna track forward to the end of the shot there. And then we'll just track backwards and it'll go through the whole shot. And I'll be back once it's done tracking. Keep an eye on it. Make sure there's no major movements happening or any major distortions with the shape that you've drawn on your track. Okay, that has done tr its tracking job. And as you can see, Mocha is amazing. Even if your shape goes off screen, it'll have that continuity of whatever the shape is or the plane is that you have throughout your whole X-spline and it'll keep that track going strong. So if you just scroll through, 
and just keep an eye. Obviously, there's a little section here where it seems to move slightly. So if there's anything that bothers you, you can go in and, and read, you know, move your spline here bothers me slightly. So what I might just, I might just adjust the shape to get a little bit more detail in there. I'll just retract forward just that section. I think it's up till about there. Now it stores that data. So yeah, you've changed your shape there. You can see your shape is shifting there. You know, that's where I made that change there, that keyframe, and then that'll keyframe across, that'll interpolate across to that original keyframe that you made. So now it's hard to tell, you know, exactly. Your X spline is moving. But one way to, you know, check is to select your spline, come up here to view and click stabilize. So now you'll see your shot moving and just keep an eye, you'll tell, you know, you'll be able to tell if there's any crazy jerky movements. You know, this seems to be a nice clear move along with what the original camera shot looked like. So yeah, using that stabilization tool I find is really handy because just with one simple scroll through, I can see that there weren't any major jerky movements or seems, you know, like it's copying the original handheld movement. Okay, that's it. So we've tracked our shot in Mocha. We can hit the save button here, um, save the project, and then you can close Mocha and come back to After Effects, then go ahead and go Layer, New, Null Object, and we're gonna call that BG Track. Go back to your original shot, Tracking Data, Create Tracking Data, and we're actually gonna select the one we created in Mocha, BG Track, and hit OK. Come down here to Export Option, change that to Transform, um, and select the BG Track Null Object, which is Layer 1, as your layer to export to, and then hit Apply Export. If you press U on your BG Track, you'll see now that all those keyframes there plugged in and your null object is ready to go, ready to attach whatever you need to it to then have a clean and nice track. Okay, now we're gonna do our alpha matte. So we want this background to be um, transparent and we want the foreground to be opaque. Now we could do that with a key, right? We could key the blue sky, but in this case, that sky is not really that blue. and we got this guy here with his white shirt. That could be a little bit problematic as well. So I'm gonna try a method that I've been using for a while to create a alpha mat of this shot. Let's go. So duplicate your original hiking shot. I'm just gonna right click, go effects, and color correction and curves. And we're just gonna crush the darker colors there. And then raise the white there. And pretty quickly, you've got a Real nice alpha mat there. So we can delete Mocha off of that uh, duplicate shot there and we'll just call this the alpha. Come down here to your hiking shot and track mat, select Luma inverted. And there we have a nice cutout of our guys moving up the mountain. As you can see, issue with that guy's bright shirt, but we'll get back to that. So it's looking pretty good right now. But like I said, we can do a little bit of cleanup later. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my sky shot. Like I said, you can use whatever you want, but my shot is from Pexels. Pexels is a great uh, site for free stock photos. Um, if I just type in here, cloudy sky, we can come in here and we get plenty of amazing shots. As you can see here, if we needed a super moody scene, boom, we got that one or this one. Um, recognize this shot, that's from my Spheres uh, VFX short film. I mean, there's the one that we used there. Thank you, Pixabay again. Um, and these are free to use. Um, Creative Commons, zero. The rules are you can use all these free for commercial or non-commercial purposes. Giving credit to the photographer um, is not required, but appreciated. Um, and you can edit and adapt the photos as you like. So we're back in After Effects and I'm gonna drag my sky just down below my hiking shot. I'm just gonna scale it. So press S for scale. I'm just gonna scale it down and then just scale it back up. So we need obviously some movement in our sky here. That's a pretty good spot there. We'll call that the cloudy sky. And we're gonna tie that to our BG track. And if we watch this back now, we'll see that it is a real nicely tracked onto the background there. Now, generally, if you have a landscape shot, there won't be that perfect transition between landscape and then perfectly blue sky. There's usually some sort of haze um, that appears at the bottom of the sky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate that and that'll help us mask these little issues here that we have on our alpha or luma mat there. So 
what I'm going to do is select my masking tool here, click on the cloudy sky, and I'm just going to draw a rough little and just finish it off up around the top. There we go, looking pretty good. And then just press F for feather and we can just feather that out. Okay. And then what you want to do is just make a duplicate of that hiking shot, remove the track mat and then bring it down below your cloudy sky. There you have it. I can then move the cloudy sky up and you can see that if I just move my see that the haze just creeps up a little bit and it takes in a little bit of the original shot which you know thereby fills in the little gaps that we had here on this guy um, and just makes it look a little bit cleaner a little bit better so let's take a look and play that back looking real nice and crisp there and we've got a beautiful blue sky in the background so guys depending on your shot you might also need to color grade it slightly um, so I'm just gonna go in here and just chuck a curves on my uh, cloudy sky. I'm just gonna come in here and just brighten it up a little bit. Just a basic little curves adjustment um, and then just bring up the black slightly as well. That's looking pretty good there. And if we have a closer look here, you know, you just need to make sure that there isn't any major noise in your shot. So this shot doesn't have heaps of noise in it. So it, it blends in, you know, okay with the sky. The sky isn't too clean and sharp. But if you want, you can chuck some noise on there. So I'll just take the noise and grain noise effect, put it on the cloudy sky, and just add maybe, you know, 3% three, um, 3 noise and unclick use color noise. And that might just settle that shot in there for you. Now, not all sky replacements are going to be this easy. You're going to have tricky situations, but hopefully those tools and those methods creating that alpha or luma mat there and tracking that shot in uh, Minecraft After Effects will help you uh, get a great result. Now, in some cases, you might need to go in there and rotoscope. And that means, you know, rotoscoping out the top of the hill here, rotoscoping each actor out individually. And in most cases, that is how they will do it in big movies. Um, but in plenty of situations, something like this, you know, it works. Looking at it like that, it's a great result in the relatively short amount of time that we spent on it. Now, if your shot has a little bit more handheld movement and more motion blur, um, similar to some of the shots in my six part VFX compositing series, you might want to then go in there and check your motion blur icon and make sure your master motion blur is on just so the motion blur matches with the movement of the camera. Now, in this case, there isn't any major motion blur um, in this shot, but it wouldn't hurt to turn it on as you generally would have shot, you know, one over 50 or 180 degrees on your shutter angle. So just to double check, come here to your composition, composition settings, advanced and shutter angles here, how it's 250. So I've been playing around with my shutter speed there, set it back down to 180, which is your standard and hit OK. Like I said, guys, you can go ahead and play around with that, add some mountains in, add whatever you want. But those are my quick techniques to getting a great uh, sky replacement with an After Effects without any major fuss. That was relatively easy and relatively quick and painless. Now, if you want to learn more about some of the techniques you might need, uh, check out episode two in my series of VFX compositing uh, tutorials. I'll link that in the description down below. I do a similar technique there where I create a mat using keying or using a Luma mat. If you like what you see, feel free to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. My name is Stefan, aka Hippo, and this is where I hang out in After Effects, your happy place. See ya.